If you are looking how to develop a new electronic hardware product with the goal being to eventually manufacture and sell it, then in this video, I'm going to break it all down for you into 15 manageable steps. Hi, I'm John Teal, founder of Predictable Designs. I'm a former microchip design engineer and an entrepreneur who brought my own hardware product to market. And now I help other entrepreneurs succeed with their own new electronic products. We're going to be covering a lot of material in this video, but don't worry about trying to memorize all 15 steps because I've prepared a handy PDF cheat sheet for you that you can download absolutely for free. Just see the link below in the description or go to predictabledesigns.com forward slash 15 steps. Okay, let's get started. The first step in developing a new product is to create a product definition with all of the details of the product based on the market research that you've done. Some of the things that you may want to include in your product definition are defining the purpose of your product. So this is where you would describe the overall purpose for the product, who will use it, where they will use it, and why they will use it. This is where you'll list all of the desired features with a brief summary of their intended purpose. When possible, try to differentiate between hardware features and software features. You'll also want to specify the target retail price. Knowing your target retail price gives you, your development team some idea on the components that can be used in the design. If you plan to sell your product for only $10, then the component choices will be considerably different than for a $500 product. You'll need to specify the product dimensions. Remember, small size is extremely important for a lot of modern tech products, but keep in mind that squeezing everything tighter will increase your development complexity and cost. You'll also want to specify the operating environment. Will your product be used in extreme environments, such as in sub-zero temperatures or in the rain? A lot of portable products require a battery, and you're going to need to specify the battery requirement. How important is battery life for your product? What are the physical constraints in the battery size? Will your product have a rechargeable battery or a replaceable batteries? And if rechargeable, how will it be recharged? USB, solar, wireless, etc. Does your product need to communicate with a smartphone and does it need a custom app? If so, will it be for Android, iPhone, or both? Processing performance is another specification you'll want to include. Will your product process lots of data or perform complicated calculations quickly? Or perhaps your product has an advanced user interface with complex graphics. This will impact the decision on the best microprocessor or microcontroller for your project. You'll need to specify any wireless communication requirements. If your product requires wireless communication, then what protocol will be used? Will it be Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, cellular? What about the operating range for any wireless communication? What type of data throughput speeds are, are needed? These are all some of the things that you will need to include in your product specification or product definition in order to have the right product developed that actually meets the requirements of your customers. Step number two is to understand the costs and obstacles and then simplify your product appropriately. Most entrepreneurs dive headfirst into all the details of fully developing their product. Only after they finish development do they finally look up and begin thinking about the next steps. This is a huge mistake. To have a realistic chance of success, you absolutely must understand all of the costs and obstacles you must surpass to get your product to market. The types of early questions you need to address include how much will the product cost to develop? Development costs will be your first major financial obstacle. Whether you plan to bootstrap product development or raise outside funding, you need an accurate estimate of how much money you will need. Otherwise, you may run out, run out of money before your product is fully developed. Another question that you need to answer is how much will it cost to scale your product to mass manufacturing? The electronics is usually the most complicated piece of the product to develop, but the enclosure and any other custom plastic parts are usually the most expensive and complex part of the product to scale to mass manufacturing. This is primarily due to the cost of the high pressure injection molds required to produce custom plastic parts. 
the primary scaling costs for the electronics are for any required electrical certifications, such as FCC, UL, CSA, CE, etc. Obtaining these electrical certifications is not cheap, so be sure to plan ahead for these costs. Fortunately, there are ways to significantly reduce these costs. Another question you need to answer is how much will it cost to manufacture your product? It's critical to know as soon as possible how much it will cost to manufacture your product. Don't spend thousands of dollars creating a new product until you know how much it will cost to develop, scale, and most importantly, to manufacture. There's a lot that goes into manu the manufacturing cost for an electronic hardware product. Some of these costs include the electronic components, the PCB, the enclosure, the product assembly, quality testing, manufacturer's profit, scrap, duties, and logistics. Does Apple or any successful tech company start developing a new product without knowing how much it will cost to manufacture it? Of course not, and neither should you. Step three is to formulate your plan to surpass the cost and obstacles that, we did, that were discovered in step two. Developing, scaling, and eventually manufacturing a new electronic hardware product is no easy task. It takes tremendous focus and hard work. But it also takes planning. Developing and manufacturing a new product is too complicated to just wing it. You need a plan to succeed. Don't make the mistake of jumping headfirst into product development without a realistic plan. I don't necessarily mean you need a formal business plan unless you plan to raise outside capital, but you must have a realistic plan on how you will fund your startup and eventually sell your product. Some questions that you need to ask, to think about include, do you plan to entirely bootstrap your startup or do you plan to seek outside funding? If you do plan to seek outside funding, then what types? Angel investors, crowdfunding, manufacturer financing, inventory financing, there are lots of choices for funding a hardware startup. What about marketing? How do you plan to get the word out about your product? Will you focus on online or offline marketing? How do you plan to sell the product? Will you sell it only through your own website or will you, will you sell it through retail stores or perhaps only through online retailers like Amazon? These are all things that you need to think about and plan for upfront. Step four is to pick your development strategy and team. There are really five options when it comes to developing a new hard, electronic hardware product. Option number one is do the product design yourself. You'll need to be experienced with electronics design, programming, 3D modeling, and manufacturing. And in most cases, you may have one or two of these skills, but you will likely need to outsource some of the other steps. Option number two is find an engineer to become a co-founder. Bringing on co-founders can be a great option if you lack the necessary technical skills or lack the money needed to hire outside engineers. But finding good co-founders can be very challenging. You will be tied to them for years, so make sure they are a good fit. Also, bringing on co-founders, of course, reduces equity in your company, so that's something else to consider. Option Development option number three is to hire freelance engineers. Keep in mind that very few engineers will be knowledgeable in electronics, circuit design, programming, 3D design, injection molding, design for manufacturing, and etc. So you will likely need more than one engineer for your project. You will also need to manage the various engineers to make sure that all of the pieces fit together properly to form your final product. Development option number four is to hire a full design firm. The main advantage of hiring a full design firm is that all of the engineers work together and the firm will fully manage the project. If you lack the necessary skills to manage various freelance engineers, then hiring a full design firm may be a better option for you. The big downside though is that hiring a design firm to develop your product is also the most expensive development route. Development option number five is to partner with an existing manufacturer. If you can find a manufacturer already making something similar to your own product, then they may be able to develop your product. This can be one of the fastest and cheapest ways to get a new product developed. 
The downside is you will have less control and you likely won't fully own all of the intellectual property. Step number five is to design the schematic circuit diagram for the electronics. Once you have confirmed that you can, that you can manufacture and sell your product at a profit, and you have a plan to surpass all of the obstacles that lie ahead, it's now time to design the schematic circuit diagram. A schematic circuit diagram is a conceptual diagram of the electronics that is similar to a blueprint for a house. The schematic circuit diagram shows exactly how all of the components from microchips to resistors connect together. Don't forget, you don't need to memorize everything I'm saying in this video because you can download the handy PDF cheat sheet in the link in the description below. Step number six is to generate the bill of materials for the electronics. Once the schematic circuit diagram is finalized, then a bill of materials, or BOM for short, should be generated. The BOM lists the part number, quantity, manufacturer, and package for all of the electronic components. Step number seven is to design the printed circuit board layout for the electronics. Once the schematic circuit diagram is completed, it's time to design the actual printed circuit board layout. The PCB is the physical board that holds and connects all of the electronic components. A PCB is made up of stacked layers for routing all of the electrical signals con connecting the various components. The simplest PCB uses just two layers, but most use four to eight layers and really complicated boards can use 10 layers or more. Step number eight is to develop the electronics firmware and software. Just about all modern electronic products include a microchip called a microcontroller or a microprocessor that acts as the brains for the product. The microcontroller or microprocessor needs to be programmed to perform the desired functionality, of course. This program is embedded inside your product and is called firmware. Many products will also require either a custom mobile app or computer software program developed, so keep that in mind as well. Step number nine, design the 3D computer model for the product's enclosure. The first step in developing your product's enclosure is the creation of a 3D computer model. The 3D model can then be turned into a physical prototype and eventually into a manufacturable version of your product's enclosure. The 3D model can also be used for marketing purposes, especially before you have functional prototypes available. One of the most critical aspects of designing the 3D model for your product enclosure is a solid understanding of the principles and limitations of high pressure injection molding. Many 3D designers have absolutely no understanding of injection molding, meaning you are likely to end up with a design that can perhaps be prototyped via 3D printing that cannot ever be mass manufactured using high pressure injection molding. If appearance isn't very critical for your product, then you may be able to avoid this step entirely by using off the shelf enclosures, at least initially. However, for most products, a custom enclosure is gonna be required and the technology that you'll use for creating those prototypes will be 3D printing and then eventually for mass manufacturing, it will be high pressure injection mold. Step number 10 is to get an independent design review for the electronics and the enclosure. All engineers are human. Shocking, I know, but we all make mistakes. So getting a second opinion before prototyping your product is always a smart move that will ultimately save you money and time. When it comes to anything complex and critical, a second opinion is always smart. Whether it's a doctor saying you need brain surgery or an engineer designing your new product, you would be wise to always get a second opinion. Big tech companies always do this, and so should you. When I was a microchip designer at Texas Instruments, we were always required to present our designs to a room full of other engineers who were eager to find flaws in our designs. Step number 11, prototype your electronics PCB. Producing PCB prototypes is a two-step process. The first step is the manufacture of the empty printed circuit board without any components on it. 
And then the second step is soldering all of the electronic components onto the board, and this is known as PCB assembly. Whether you are producing a few prototypes or mass manufacturing thousands of boards, the PCB manufacturing process is essentially the same. Step number 12 is to prototype your product's enclosure. In most cases, you will use 3D printing for producing your early enclosure prototypes. You may consider purchasing a 3D printer of your own, especially if you think you will need several iterations to get your enclosure just right. If the appearance of your enclosure is really critical, then purchasing your own 3D printer is likely to be a really good investment. 3D printers can be purchased now for only a few hundred dollars, allowing you to create as many prototype versions as needed. Otherwise, there are many companies at your disposal that will happily turn your 3D model into a real 3D printed prototype. Step number 13, evaluate the PCB prototypes and revise as needed. The first version of any new product is almost never the final one. So any issues that you find with the electronics will need to be debugged and fixed for the next prototype iteration. This can be a really difficult stage to forecast in both terms of cost and time. Any bugs found in your PCB design are of course unexpected, so it can take some time to figure out the source of these bugs and how to best fix them. Step number 14. Now it's time to evaluate the enclosure prototype and modify the 3D model as necessary. Generally, it will take several prototype iterations to get the enclosure design just right. Although 3D computer models allow you to visualize everything, nothing compares to holding a real prototype in your hand. There will almost certainly be both functional and cosmetic changes that you'll want to make once you hold your first physical prototype in your hand. And finally, step number 15 is to get the required electrical certifications. Almost all electronic products sold must have various types of certification. The certifications required will vary depending on the product and the country the product will be sold in. Some of the more common certifications required include FCC, UL, CSA, and CE. Fortunately, there are various ways to avoid the need for some of the more expensive certifications. You do not need electrical certifications up at the very beginning. You should make sure that you delay certifications as late as possible. And you can even do small sales tests up to a few hundred units for most products. There are, there are exceptions, but for most products, you can do small sales tests without having all of the expensive electrical certification. Don't forget, you don't need to memorize all the 15 steps that I've covered, and you can download my free 15 steps PDF cheat sheet using the link in the description below. You will also get a copy of my ultimate guide on how to develop and sell a new electronic product. Hey there, this is John Teal, founder of Predictable Designs. If you enjoyed this video and you want to keep learning more about developing, manufacturing, and selling new hardware products, then be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also check out the websites predictabledesigns.com and thehardwareacademy.com.